Father, touch somebody. Father, heal somebody. Deliver someone tonight. Let today become a defining moment in the life of somebody. To the glory of your name, we worship you in Jesus' precious name. Genesis chapter 32 from verse 24. Genesis 32 verse 24. And Jacob was left alone. And they wrestled with him a man until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. And he said unto him, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince, Hast thou power with God and with men and has prevailed. The Lord bless his word in Jesus' precious name. I speak quickly tonight on the subject alone with God. Alone with God. Like you know, watching anywhere you are watching right now, the message series of the month has had to be adjusted slightly for the sake of the times we are in. Alone with God. The objective is understanding the virtue of time alone with God. Is there any virtue in spending time alone with God? Beloved, in scriptures, it is made clear that all things work together for good. Romans chapter 8 verse 28. All things work and we know that all things work together for good. To them that love God, to them who are the call according to his purpose. For the child of God who is called good will always be the outcome of every situation. Beyond human visibility there is divine activity even in the midst of severe adversity. Say it again. Beyond human visibility, there is divine activity, even in the midst of severe adversity. For those who love God, all things work together for good. It doesn't matter who caused the situation. For example, we are in the midst of a situation now. It's called the coronavirus. COVID-19. Whatever be the implication of the COVID, coronavirus disease, and the sequencing of the 19. But, we are in the midst of such situation. It is having a very negative toll on the economies of nations. Very, very disastrous toll on businesses for people government work and so on and so forth 
And at times like this, there is the tendency to become very angry or very frustrated or very agitated or very irritated. Very confused and very perplexed. But he said, all things work together for good. To them that love God. Even to them that are called according to his purpose. Now take note of the following five things I will say concerning how this is. First, that every adversity has the potential of a corresponding advantage. Every adversity, irrespective of whatever cost the adversity it has the potential of a corresponding advantage joseph told his brethren you meant evil you sold me for evil that was adversity but god sent me ahead of you to preserve your life every adversity has the potential of a corresponding advantage and that includes the situation we find ourselves in now Second, every setback can be a setup for a shift up. Every setback in life can be a setup for a shift up. You look at it as a setback, but God looks at it as a setup. In order for your life to shift up. And in the name of Jesus, I decree a shift up for somebody. Every setback is a set, set up for a shift up. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thirdly, every challenge can be the forerunner of a great change. Every challenge can be the forerunner of a great change. You call it a challenge, but it came to prepare the ground for a change that is about to happen. A forerunner of a great change. We saw that also in the life of our master. <laughs> when the crucifixion was coming, the devil never knew that it was the forerunner for a resurrection. A forerunner of a great change. Thirdly, or fourthly, problem can become the foundation for progress. Problem can become the foundation for progress. Saul, so, the king of Israel, was looking for his father's missing donkeys. And in the course, it was a problem. It was a problem. I mean, the donkeys were all missing at once. All of them missed at once. I mean, you hear the story of one donkey missing or two or three. Not all of them at once missing together. That means God was up to something. The donkeys were found at the end. But that problem became the foundation for his progress to become the king of Israel. I don't know how you look at it, but in this season, I prophesy to everyone watching from all around the world and anywhere you are connected, out of this problem, progress shall come in the name of Jesus. Problem can become the foundation for progress. And finally, number five, frustration can be the birthplace of manifestation. Frustration can be the birthplace, birth, the birthplace of manifestation. Added to that, I can also, all right, frustration can be the birthplace of manifestation. Peter was frustrated. Master, I have toiled all night. I caught nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, out of that frustration, Peter, the fisherman, was turned into Peter, the fisher of men. 
at that instance, he saw a side of God he never knew before. Frustration can be the birthplace of manifestation. Let me add one more. And that is that isolation can facilitate arrival at destination. Isolation can facilitate a person's arrival at their destination. That is why this message is tonight. Alone with God. There will be many, many advantages of this adversity situation we found ourselves. But one of the advantages of this season is the advantage of being alone with God. Alone, alone, alone. <laughs> when was the last time they gave you holiday free of charge so you can have time to pray? <laughs> so you can have time to study the Bible and then you'll be paid salary at the end. One of the advantages of this season is the advantage of being alone with God. The journey. Now, I give you just three examples. First, Dave, Jacob. Jacob was left alone from our text. And Jacob was left alone. And from being left alone, something happened to him that turned him to Israel. Israel could not have been born except Jacob was left alone. Israel could not have been born. Israel is the nation. Jacob was the person that gave birth to Israel, the nation. The nation of Israel today, one of the strongest nations on the earth today, the most, one of the most impactful nations of the earth today. I, I heard that they are dealing with the coronavirus so terribly that not a single death had occurred there yet. I don't know how true that is. But Israel was born because somebody was left alone. Joseph's journey to his destination of becoming the prime minister of Egypt was a journey of aloneness. From the comfort of his father's house, he was relocated to Egypt and there was alone. When he thought he had settled down and found a family in Potiphar's house, he was relocated again to the prison and there he was alone. And from, this, from those seasons of aloneness, the destiny of Jacob manifested. I decree that somebody's destiny watching this broadcast today shall be exploded, shall be manifested, and shall be fulfilled in the name of Jesus. A third example is the example of David. David was basically alone. When Samuel went to the house of Jesse to anoint a king, all the children of Jesse were together. Joseph, Jake, David was alone in the bush, keeping the flock. I think that will be in verse 11 of First Samuel chapter 16. And Samuel said to Jesse, I hear all thy children. I can see all your children around, but are these all of them? And he said, there remaineth yet the youngest. And behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Saul said unto Jesse, send and fetch him. For we will not sit down till he come hither. And he sent and brought him. He was alone. The anointing located Joseph, David, from his place of aloneness. I believe that the majority of the Psalms that were written, were written from that place of aloneness. I believe that the depth he had with God, all came from his place of aloneness. Beloved brothers and sisters, we may be in a season that looks like an adverse season, but I am here to announce and introduce you to, to the advantages that this season holds.
Somebody say amen. Take note of the following. First, that seasons of isolation or separation are seasons of reflection. I will talk deeper on these as we look at the various things we can do at this season. There are seasons of reflection. Seasons of meditation. Second, seasons of isolation or separation are seasons of devotion and consecration. First of all, there are seasons of reflection and meditation. Second, there are seasons of devotion and consecration. And that leads to number three, which is the outcome of, of all. The seasons of isolation and separation are seasons of transformation. <laughs> Suddenly everything changed. Israel will become his will come out of Jacob at this season of separation. What do you do? How do you take advantage of this mega opportunity? How do you take advantage of this season? What do you do? Let me say it like this. This is the time to do what you have been looking for time to do. <laughs> it's, it's very easy to focus on coronavirus and miss the opportunity that the time offers. What do you do at this time? This is the time to do what you have you had been looking for time to do. Without a doubt, there is someone who has been looking for time to do something. You've been looking for time to do something. Secondly, this is the time to do what you have always been too busy to do. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. Work has not allowed me. Office schedule has been too strenuous. It's the time to do what you have always been too busy to do. Thirdly, this is the time to do what will shift your life to whole new levels. Will shift your life the time to do it. So that at the end of it, two things can happen. One, at the end of it, coronavirus and his devil will regret for the opportunity they gave you. <laughs> so that at the end of it all, because of what we will happen to you, happen with you, happen at you in this season. The calamity will regret his calamitousness. Coronavirus and, and, and his devil will regret giving you such a time. Secondly, so that at the end of the day, you will have to thank coronavirus or thank the devil that sent it. Well, won't thank him because he killed people. Or thank him because or, or, or because or let the devil know. Devil, you meant it for evil, but I'm grateful you couldn't kill me. And I'm grateful that I've been able to achieve with my life what I wouldn't have had the time to achieve otherwise. That is, make the devil regret it. Somebody say a loud amen said all that what can we do with this time what can you do number one this time alone what do you do with it number one we make it number one time for personal spiritual revival 
time to take deep spiritual roots in God. Time to service your altar of relationship with God. Time to service intimacy with God. Time to know God. You know, intimacy requires time. You don't know a person in a hurry. You know people with time. And the Bible said the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. This is the time to say, Lord, show me yourself. Let me know you like I have not known you before. Time to deepen root in prayer. Time to, pe time to perfect the pursuit of God. Time to see the side of God you haven't seen before. Like Paul the Apostle prayed in Philippians chapter 3 and in verse 10 that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death after 33 years of impactful ministry. This is the time. And if this time was used to know God then it was not a waste of time. If this time was used to build our relationship with God, then it was not a waste of time. If this time was used to build intimacy with God, then it was not a waste of time. If this time was used to know God like you have not known him before, then it was not a waste of time. If this time was used, it was not a waste of time. Am I communicating at all? I started a book yesterday, very voluminous, of 500 and something pages of book. And before I knew it, I was almost on page 200 or something. And, and the things I was seeing from that man of God who, is, who has already passed on to glory made it look to me like I haven't started ministry and life at all. Right? Maybe otherwise there, ha there would have been so much schedule and I wouldn't have had time to even look at a page of that, of that thing. You make it time for personal spiritual revival. Time to pursue God. Number two, make it time for personal development. Or rather, make it the time to read that material you have been keeping. That material, that particular material. for personal development. Read that material you have been keeping. Time where you upgraded your mentality. Where you aggressively decided not to be outdated. You know that when you are not informed, you can be deformed. Life and destiny can be deformed for a man or a woman who is not informed. This is the time to boost your information base. This is the time to saturate your mind in your area of endeavor, of enterprise, of learning, of training, and spiritual areas as well. Don't let this season pass until you have been able to read through a material. And if the season is passing tomorrow or next tomorrow, or matter how short it is, ensure that you are aggressive enough to make some deposits in your spirit ahead of the season. Make it time to read that material. Do you know that material? I'm sure you know that material you've been keeping. Oh, I, I like this book. I, this book will help me. You know when somebody gives you money you can spend the money and the money can finish but when you get a quality information one quality information that enters your life as a fixed deposit
can begin, can continue to yield dividends for the rest of your life. Yield you results for the rest of your life. One information, one information. When a person goes to school and trains and becomes a medical doctor, he's a fixed deposit. That, that thing that he, that, that he took the time to acquire and to study remains with him and can determine the rest of his life permanently. But if someone gave him money, uh, no matter how big the money is, maybe the equivalent of 10 years doctor's salary, he, he, he can finish it. So the information that steps into your heart and life and spirit can shape your life forever. Very important. Make it time to study that material you have been keeping. Time for personal development. Number three, make it the time to review life's purpose and vision. Time to review life's purpose and vision. What is my life all about? How have I spent my life and how am I spending it? It is a time to think deeply on how to maximally impact your world per time with whatever assignment is in your hands. Time. I will stand up on my watch. It's a place of separation. I will watch to see what he will say to me. And what I shall answer when I am I'm reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that read at it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. It's a time to reflect deeply, 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 deeply on your life, on your, on your purpose, on your assignment, on your pursuits of life. Very, very important. Number four, you make it time to learn or sharpen your skill in one area or the other. Time to learn or sharpen your skill in one area or the other. You sharpen your skill. So that when you are out, let this season be like a refinery for you. You entered raw. You came out refined. You entered like crude oil. You came out as refined product. Sharpen. You are a graphic artist. You are a designer. You are a teacher, a preacher. An apostle, a prophet. A singer, an instrumentalist. A servant of the Lord in one capacity or the other. You identify the things you do. And what to, what to do to do them better. To sharpen your skill. To sharpen. In fact, it's possible to be a time to learn a new skill. It's possible to learn a new skill. After three lessons on the saxophone, I played it within the same week. Within that same week, I played the song for the first time. It's possible. Make it a time. The aim of this is that by the time these days have come and gone, you have not wasted your life. And the devil didn't succeed in wasting your time. And the virus did not succeed in wasting your life. Finally, make it time to learn permanent life lessons. In the course of this pandemic, just make it a time to learn permanent life lessons. It was in the year that King Uzziah died that Isaiah had the greatest encounter of his life. He learned the greatest lesson of his life. He realized that you could be in ministry and yet God is still looking for who to send. Abraham Lincoln, it was who said, no, Benjamin Franklin, it was who said, those things that hurt instruct. Every time you see anything that looks painful, inside it is the possibility of gainfulness. If it hurts,
thoughts it can instruct. Out of frustration can come instruction. Out of frustration can come instruction. The things that touch you, teach you. They teach you. They teach you. So what is this season saying to me? What am I seeing? What am I hearing? There are many things that the season is already saying. It's saying that the systems of this world can collapse any day God wants. It's saying that, that the, the whole world system can crumble any day God wants. It says that, that, that money, power, does not hold the answer to the questions of this world. Sophisticated governments with sophisticated healthcare were helpless in the face of this deadly demonic disease. Prominent leaders of certain countries have already died from the same disease. And they have, they have access to the best medicare in the world. Economies crumbling. Trillions lost in one day. Just so, just reveals to us. And then he's showing us that one day time shall stand still. The roads will be deserted. <laughs> As it is in some places today. No market to hold anywhere. No nightclub. No church service. Except those who fail to live by the rapture. No parliament. Nothing. When time has come to an end and the great white throne judgment is set to start, it's just showing us. So we reflect. Make it such a time so that instead of becoming bitter, we become better. Instead of becoming depressed, we become distinguished by the things we learn. So, make it time for personal spiritual revival. Time to study that material you have been keeping. Time for personal development. Make it time to review life's purpose and vision. What Going forward, what do I, how do I make more impact in my generation? Time to learn or sharpen your skill in one area or the other. If, in fact, to even learn a new skill. Make it time to learn permanent life lessons. This time alone with God will produce, has the potential of producing the following results as I round up. Number one, time alone with God has the capacity of eliminating curses and establishing blessings. I won't let you go until you bless me, especially as you deepen your spiritual root. Eliminating curses you can hold on to God aggressively at this time. Something must change in my life. My life cannot continue like this. My life cannot continue like this. And suddenly, something changes. It's time alone, eliminating curses and establishing the blessing. Second, this time alone with God has the potential of breaking limitations and lifting embargoes from life. Jacob was the man who was limited by his past. But time alone with God lifted his limitations, broke the embargoes. Breaking limitations and lifting embargoes. Thirdly, the time alone with God has the capacity of changing 
identity and label. Suddenly, what they call you changed. He was called Jacob before, before that time alone. At the end, he became called Israel. Something changed. I don't know the name they have called you before now. It can change within this season. Capacity of changing identity and label. Four, time alone with God has the capacity Let me, let me replace the word capacity with the ability so I don't sound tautological. It has the ability for capacity enlargement. Capacity enlargement. Jacob became Israel from time alone with God. Capacity enlargement. Your life was small before. Now it is big because of time alone with God. Number five, time alone with God has the capacity for the impartation of power to prevail. That is suddenly power to prevail over life circumstances is on you. And the things that crumbled you before can't crumble you anymore because you just got power. God told him, I say, Prince, you have had power with God and with man. And you have prevailed. Power to prevail with God. Was that number? That is number. Can you show it to me? That, that's number five. Time alone with God has the capacity for the impartation of power to prevail. Number six. Time alone with God has the capacity for the impartation of royalty. Royalty and rulership. He said as a prince, the prince is the son of a king, is royal. Time alone with God has the capacity to turn you into a royalty, a king, a ruler in some domains. Finally, time alone with God has the capacity to impart upon you the ability to face the future without fear. It has the capacity to impart upon you the boldness to face the future without fear. Jacob was afraid of Esau before this time. But by the time his tenure alone with God was over, he was ready to dare any Esau from anywhere. Beloved, I welcome you to this season of aloneness with God. And I believe that something is happening to you. Lift up your hands wherever you are and just go ahead and appreciate him. Appreciate him. Honor him. Worship him. Adore him. You can be upstanding wherever you are sitting. Even if you, are, if you are not in church physically, you can do service where you are. So stand up where you are. Lift up your hands and let's appreciate him. Let's honor him and let's adore him. Let's magnify his precious, holy, wonderful name. Father, we love you. Father, we honor you. Father, we adore you. Blessed be your name. Honor to your name. Adoration to your name. Worship to your name. Glory to your name. Father, we thank you. And Father, we thank you. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' precious name.